the first one <laughs> die, then we going in. Yes. Girl, I'll be doing all kinds of stuff to try to um distract the um or or, or not not distract, filibuster. Right, well, right, right. Wait, I'm like they right, need right, a manual right. for that. Exactly. <laughs> So those that are already in, tuning in, as you come in, if you can please like and share um, the live video. And we will go ahead and get started. We got our first viewer, so we can go ahead and get rolling. Okay. So today I have with me Miss Gentry Simmons here today <laughs> to talk about everything that she has going on. She is a public published author and she's a life coach. So we're going to get into what she has going on with her business, which is Life Golden Coaching. So we're going to talk about that as far as your book goes. Congratulations Thank on that. You. That is awesome. Uh, first, we're going to get into the life coach okay. aspect. Um, how long have you been coaching, period? Girl, well, really, unofficially, my uh, whole life. Really? And the funny thing about it is I didn't even know it. And, you know, the basis of coaching, of course, a lot of times people don't really know. It's, it's now people know what a coach is. Right. Um, traditionally, you think of an athletic coach or something like that. But with life coaching, people are like, I don't know how to coach my life. You right. know, and so the, um, the element of life coaching comes in, of course, with being able to not just give people advice, mm -hmm. but being able to provide solutions for people. Right. And um, I say a lot of times the difference between a life coach and your counselor uh -huh. is that you know counselors will label and go deep with certain things but what we do is we're causing you to take action take action yeah so we're here to help you help provide solutions and um yeah it's funny because when i told my friends probably about 2011 was when i really was like wait a minute Right. I'm a life coach. Right. That's a funny story behind that. But anyway, um, I said to my friends, do you think I could be a life coach? And they literally acted like, like uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> like, duh. Like, but that's what you've been doing. it's your personality, too. Because yeah. when I first met you, I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> it was like a click. Um, thanks, Jasmine, for tuning in. Um, if you could like and share, that will be greatly appreciated. Um, when you say life coach and counselor, I know you name one difference ever give us a more difference okay yeah. some people may get it confused yeah well you know it's so funny because i'm i'm the type of person i'm always learning uh when i was at liberty university well you know i'm always going to rep alvin and that's first. right let's do that first <laughs> <laughs> I am an alum of Alabama a and University twice. Yes, I have my bachelor's in English and history education. I love the hell. So I have to do that. Sorry. You said two times. Mm -hmm. two and times. then I have a master's in English education. I'm not trying to throw degrees out there. I'm repping the hill. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... <laughs> I love my school because I left Mobile at 17 and I went to the hill and I grew up. And you know, I love the HBCU experience right. because um, minority students many times are overlooked the scholarship opportunities and things like that. And being able to get the chance to go to school and flourish is everything. Right. So that's part of my passion too. And we can talk about later. But back to the difference between coaching and counseling. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't learn until I got my second master's the difference between coaching and counseling okay because what was happening for me was i took this organic journey of being a coach because i was like well okay i'm doing it i did so much research i said okay do i go and seek certification and oh goodness see i would have a blooper on your uh, thing and <laughs> that's I'm gonna, okay look and we i'm gonna sit bloopers. right here and put it back in that's right we take bloopers because you're not because we're authentic Listen, it's real. thank you this is not scripted. by the way <laughs> Yes, we're gonna get all into this book right here in just a second. But yes, Girl. we're we're authentic over here. Okay. No, 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 no fakeness, no, no scripts, no, none, none of that. None this of is that. real. None of that. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, at, when I when I got my second master's in executive leadership, mm -hmm. what happened was the the courses were human services mm -hmm. and counseling, and what I kept noticing was. Every time I took a counseling course, I gained a lot of information, but I was a little irritated mm -hmm. because I was like, oh my goodness, what, what is it, what is it? But my human services courses, and if you know anything about human services, that would be your social workers, all the people in the front lines who are helping to help people, Right. okay? So, girl, I, uh, <laughs> I would love my human services courses because they were so much more 
practical, okay? Gotcha. I don't mean that to say that counseling, counseling is not practical, right. but counseling tends to deal more with prescriptive measures. Not just medicine, right. but labeling, those types of right. things. And that's not saying that a life coach can't do any of that, but as a life coach, for me, I refer people when I see that they need counseling. Right. Um, I refer them to a counselor because that's not my passion. So for me, I'm not going to try to counsel you when I know there's certain things outside of my scope. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a that's a big thing that a lot of times people people don't understand. Okay. So I know you said mm -hmm. that your friend you asked your friend, you think I can do this life coaching thing? Like, what made you even think okay. it was even possible? So fall 2010. Now I'm, you know me. I'm gonna be really real, okay? Okay. I was, living, <laughs> I was living in Huntsville. Okay. I had lived in Huntsville. I lived in Huntsville since I went to the hills. So I just came back to Mobile almost three years ago now. Okay. So I'm living in Huntsville, and I was at a point where I had just started teaching at A and M. Right. And I was teaching like three classes, so. I was overwhelmed because it was my first semester teaching college. Well, I had taught at another college, but you know, university-wise, I'm like, okay, 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 I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to balance this, balance that. And I know it's a lot of viewers, you feel me, right. because you know you're trying to juggle. balance and juggle, and it's, it's difficult, especially as women. Right. And so anyway, I'm thinking to myself, how do I do this? And one night, there was a meeting at church, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to go. I'm just being honest. So all the church people, y'all judge me if you want to. That night she didn't feel like I didn't want to go. Most most of the time I didn't want to go. Right. I'm just being real. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't. And uh, I was like, oh God, here we go, another meeting. And then I thought to myself, okay, well, the girl who's conducting the meeting, there was a business and professional women's group at the church. Uh -huh. I was like, you know what? Mm, she on the up and up. Right. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and go even though I don't feel like it because the way that she conducts herself, she's not going to keep us all night and she's probably going to have something to say. Right. So I go and I'm literally so glad that I went. Right. So what happened? She had this book and the book was entitled Jesus Life Coach by Lori Beth Jones. Okay. And most people... You know, unless you're kind of in the life coaching community, would know Lori Beth Jones. She's very, I mean, she's a veteran in, in life coaching. I didn't know that. Right. But her book, she has a set series of books. But in that book, she talked about balance and productivity and all those different things that I literally needed for my life. So basically, that book, I, when she started talking about it, I was like coming alive. Right. And I said to the girl, I said, look. Can I, can I borrow that book? I promise you I'll give it back. I don't usually, you know, I'm funny because I'm a reader. Right. So I don't usually ask people to borrow their books because, you know, I know for me, uh-uh. Right. Because I don't know if you're going to give it back. back. You know, people just. And then I might kinda, have to go back to I'm it. I'm saying, and then sometimes I want to write in it. Right. Okay. And I was desperate. I wanted that book right then and there. So long story short, she said, yeah, of course. She let me borrow the book. Girl, in between me teaching class, I would read that book. It was like my breath of fresh air and I was learning it was yes yes and I was learning how to take charge of my life right and that is what so many people need right. but we don't know it we're just going with the flow so when I got in touch with that book that was my first scope at what it really means to find some type of solution to really fix your life and I'm reading it and I'm just coming alive and it birthed something in me where it was like this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is it. I'm wait, and they and I even got in touch with some of the um, professional. I took a couple of classes with Lori Beth Jones um, professionals, and that was the thing that really made me think. Oh wow, okay, you're a life coach, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know you have different count uh, clients that that you have, mm -hmm. like people you coach, and you know that thing that energy energy is transferred. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan for that like how do you deal with that to keep that energy from transferring because anybody knows energy is transferable yeah. and some people you just have to be like okay mm -hmm. I got to set this mm -hmm. shield up mm -hmm. so how do you deal with that with coaching okay that's a great question well you know honestly um, I'm the way that I live my life 
is um, I, I kind of have a gist of people like that, mm -hmm. whether we're going to be able to mesh or not, or right. what level, right. you know. And when it comes down to coaching, <clears throat> the biggest thing is, of course, you, you need to take some type of, um, you know, always have an intake. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you sit down for a consultation, you can consider what a person's energy is. Mm -hmm. And for me, I haven't had any clients with bad energy. It's good. I mean, now I done had some friends who I've had to look at the phone and be like, not today. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I'm not coaching you. You're not paying. God bless you. I not love today. you though, but not, not today. today. Because, see, the thing about energy is this. Because the question that you asked was, how would I, you know, or how do I? Because, like I said, keep my energy from being zapped by other people. Exactly. And first, and then anybody who knows me knows I believe in self-care. Right. The reason why I believe in self-care so much is because early on in my teaching career, early on in all of my endeavors, I really didn't know how to say no. I think the obvious stuff I could say no to, but the stuff that seems like, oh, everybody had a need, and oh, right. I'm gifted to do that, so yeah, let me go ahead and do right. it. Those were the things, and until I started thinking, okay, well, you know what? I can't be everything to everybody. Right. And I'm going to have to be okay with feeling kind of mean, because you will, right. in order to say no so I could like focus on myself. That was what it was, me taking charge of my life. So I think the biggest thing is, is it really doesn't rest in other people. Right. It really rests in you. What do you bring? Because for me, whenever I get <clears throat> in an environment, I'm setting the atmosphere. Right. You change that energy. I feel like that about me. So if I feel like that, that's what it is. Exactly. So um, as far as people zapping your energy, dealing with a client, you have to set healthy boundaries. First of all, you have to set expectations. Right. Because um, people need to know if, when we're working as, a, as client and coach, mm -hmm. this is not a friendship. Right. We will be friendly. Right. Because you know you're not bossing anybody. Right. It's a friendly type of relationship. It's a relaxed type of relationship. But see, the thing about a coach that's different from a mentor mm -hmm. or a friend or whatever, and I was talking about this last night on Facebook Live because I think it's so important to talk about the dynamics of relationships because people are bleeding and getting it confused, and that's why we're not experiencing authenticity. That's right. Because you the mama, but you want to be the friend. Right. I'm preaching, huh? Uh, hey, take it there. <laughs> I'm here forward. You know, Church. You, you know what I mean? So that's the thing. Um, and so, you know, your energy uh, really is what sets the tone, and right. especially as a coach, because you're supposed to be able to set an expectation that the client can feel comfortable enough to be able to grow. Right. So my biggest thing is, listen, these are certain boundaries and, set, and setting expectations. Mm -hmm. What they can expect in the coaching process, mm -hmm. what they can expect from you as a coach, and mm -hmm. then what your expectation is of them. Those kinds of things, you don't really have a lot of problems. It's like teaching. Right. I mean, have a whole lot of problems in right. the classroom. Because when you set the tone and let them know what mm -hmm. it is, this is what it is, mm -hmm. this is how it's going to mm -hmm. go, and this is what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So. That's understood. That that was that's that's good information. You have a problem, you nip it in the bud. That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't let it prolong. Yeah. As far as when you conduct your, your sessions, do you have an office or do it does the the environment depend on whatever you coaching at that time? Okay. So you know, currently most of most of what I've been doing is I've been working with nonprofits and doing consulting, and so most of my coaching I haven't had a lot of coaching clients in the past. Um, you know, a few months or so. <laughs> the funny thing is, I do have an office, mm -hmm. but um, it's it's an office for a nonprofit that I was um, working doing some work with. So I don't really push my clients into that office atmosphere because I want, I just want to be real. Like that's not really right. <laughs> you not know really. the atmosphere I want you to be in. Like that's why I asked you. I said, "Ooh, can we meet somewhere?" That's I like just being in the in the midst of people and being in right. you know. Uh, um, environments that are just intimate and real and that kind of thing. Most of what my work has been here lately, like I said, I've been doing some consulting. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I've been doing some things with nonprofits, and I've been writing this book. Yes, that's what we're about to get into, this that's, book. And, and I do more group coaching. Just I just need to put that out there than one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. One -on -one coaching is expensive, and most people don't want to invest. Right. So I don't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, it's mostly group coaching. Because you can get a better deal with group you, coaching. You can. You know, just, and, then, and then you may feel more comfortable, too. Because you, mm -hmm. you got people when you, when 
they go to talk mm -hmm. to people, they feel some kind of way. Exactly. Like they right. have an issue, which this is the thing. When you're going to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. you realize that you're trying to fix whatever issue you, you have. Yes, and who wants to? That's the thing. You have to be very, <clears throat> very vulnerable because most people don't want to go to counselors or therapists because they think that's admitting they have a problem. They don't want to come to a coach because guess what? In, in, in our nature, what we're doing is trying to figure it out. Right. And you know, and I, I know one, just certainly for me, you know, I have hired coaches before um, because if I see something in someone that I feel like I want to connect with and I want them to impart and I mm -hmm. think that I can gain something from them, I don't mind because to me, I'm not admitting that I have a problem. I'm saying that there's something that you have to offer that I want to connect with. Right. Most people don't think in that way. And then two, most people just, and it depends on what area you're in, um, especially here in the Mobile area, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know, people in business, it's already so hard for business owners. Yes. So to take that extra money to put into a coach when you're like, okay, I need to use all the resources that right. I can, or I want a business coach or whatever, you know. Well, the um, one of the young ladies that I spoke with um, that owns a women wellness bar, I asked, mm -hmm. you know, um, basically what keep her motivated. She went to name all the. I I, know. I did it. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she, she went to name all the different people that she actually. That helps motivate her. Mm -hmm. She says she has a, a coach mm -hmm. who's not her friend. Mm -hmm. And then she has a mentor. Mm -hmm. So it's needed. It's it necessary. Is. It is. I my 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 gift thing, I, I do a lot of mentoring. I'm stepping into more of my writing coaching because now that I've written my book, I've had a lot of people to reach out to me. And see, this is the thing about being authentic. For me, I felt like there were certain aspects, and this is just being totally real. And I think that's another thing, too, because, see, when you're coaching, people want you to be at a certain level. Right. They kind of want you to be Iyanla. Right. You know what I mean? Before right. they really be like, I'm paying you for what? You know? Right. It's kind of like that. But I do a lot a lot more mentoring because I love young people and I love um, young adults. Right. But when it comes down to your coaching, I think what people forget is... Um, you're not necessarily admitting that you have a problem. You're saying that you want to go ahead and collaborate. You want to be able to go to that next level. You want some insight. Exactly. You know, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't take into consideration. Right. The insight that you get from hiring a coach is phenomenal. No. So we about to get into this book. Mm -hmm. Those that, that are tuning in, if you could please like and share, I appreciate it. Um, we're gonna get into this book. This is her newly released book. I'm gonna put it close so you guys can see it. But give us the title. Organic Authenticity. Organic Authenticity. And um, this is me being, ooh, I have to say this as we get ready to talk about this book because let me tell you something. Where are you gonna go? Mm -hmm. And hire anybody to do anything for twelve dollars. Right. Hmm. hmm. You can barely get McDonald's to give you some good hot food. I mean, you know, That's dollar true. menu, whatever. Right. But if you go sit down at a restaurant, you're not gonna spend twelve. And that that dollar menu, that's trash you put in your body. So that don't that don't, even that is, give me that's stuff. not even a, a comparison. <laughs> it's not. So, it's not. Yeah, but yeah. I get it. Yes, I do get so, it. So what I was telling you just a minute ago, and my mind slipped. See, I'm, yeah, I'm real, y'all. I'm gonna tell you what's real. My mind slips. So I don't want to forget this. Um, I have a writing community. And I haven't put it, I, I've been telling people about it. I didn't put it out there until I wrote my book. Right. See, that's the thing about being authentic. Sometimes what we do is we forget that people need to see you do some things. Right. They want to see you they, do it first. Yeah, because people have known for years, people who just meet me, they're like, oh my God, yeah, I know. Ooh, you're going to have a best selling book. And I'm like, how do these people even, right. you know, know that I can write? Well, I've been teaching writing for years, but that does not mean that you can be a published author. Right. So I felt it was very important for me to struggle through mm -hmm. my getting over myself because mm -hmm. that's what it took. Getting over myself, disciplining myself to get into the place where I could publish this book. It was not easy. 
Right. You know what I mean? It was definitely worth it, but it wasn't easy. There's a lot of things I didn't know. And that's why now my passion is my writing community is called When Writers Gather. Mm -hmm. with, when Writers Gather is a writing community for those who are aspiring to write, those who may be working on an existing project, finishing up a project. Yes. You know, I want those people. I want to coach those people. And I just put, I put a Cyber Monday deal out there. Folks, you know, I don't know what to tell y'all because we can buy, buy them TVs that uh, they okay. get every year. Every year. And, um, and you're going to miss out. Stuff that, um, yeah, we don't really need. Right. But, um, but I wanted to put that out here, you know, just for those who are connected and watching. Because here's the thing. I'm going to be doing a 30-day intensive in, coming in the new year. Okay. And with that 30 days, it's like jump-starting your writing plan. Now, again, you're getting some coaching. Mm -hmm. And I don't do coaching for 30. It's 30 days, $30. I don't right. do that. Right. I don't do that. So with this days, group coaching, dollars. yeah, with this group coaching, you take advantage of it. Inbox me. But I'm only taking 10 clients. Okay, I'm gonna um, be one of those clients, so I'm gonna be the first one, more like more than likely, um, because I need it, because I've been mm -hmm. procrastinating. But the title, yes, organic authenticity. What? Where did what, it come from? Yes. Everybody asked me that. Let me tell you something about me as a writer. Words. I am in. I am enamored with words. I've been like that since I was a little girl. No one will believe me, but I used to actually read the dictionary when I was a little girl. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to spout off all these big words to you, <laughs> but I was so enamored with words that I would just, words would come to me and then I would go and look them up so I would know what they meant. Right. And I would write poetry as a little girl and words would come to me and I wanted something to rhyme, so I would do what? I would go to the dictionary and my mom had a big, fat, brown uh, Webster's Lexicon Dictionary. And what I'm, what I'm saying all that to say is these words literally just came to me. Okay. And when the thought came to me, organic authenticity, I didn't have any clue what it meant. And organic in itself. Yes. I, I, I mean, it came to me and I'm like, hmm, okay. And I knew, write it down. Right. So I wrote it down. I didn't know it was going to be a book. I didn't know what it was going to be because I speak too. So I didn't know if this was going to be like one of my workshops. I was like, okay, here it goes. Right. But what ended up happening was the more I thought on it and the more I began to live, what was happening was my life was going through this very thing. Right. So I lived this book. So organic authenticity, if I could just make it simplistic, is literally if you put yourself in the mind of what it means to be organic that's original right okay no additives no preservatives original the original it's intent the raw the yes. raw form yes okay and guess what being in the raw form bothers us right we live in a society that's so manufactured you know we want everything to be perfect and see i have a problem with perfectionism and I didn't know that when I first started writing this book. I realized it because I started doing my work. Mm -hmm. As I was doing my work, I said, wow, I want to be perfect. And I know that that doesn't exist. Right. And that's what's keeping me from doing all the things I want to do. Because I'll have an idea and then I'll go to compose it and fix it. And I want it to be perfect. And then when I get to a place that I stop, mm -hmm. then I stop. And I'm like, dang. No, this is why it's not going to work because it is the, the talk yourself right out of it. Right. And I know it's people on this broadcast. That little gnat will not let us be great. No, it won't. But I, <laughs> I think it's dead now because I just hit it. <laughs> but so, you know, just being your original self, your most raw form. Like, for instance, today, I'm like, girl, you're going to go on an interview. Don't you think you need to dress up a little bit more? No, I didn't feel like it. I mean, I just want to be cute and comfortable. Being raw. And being authentic is the best thing ever, though. It is because, guess what? You stop making excuses as to why you have to perform a certain way. Because the majority of the time, it's a, it's a performance. It's not real. Mm -hmm. It's time to take off the mask. Be who you are. Because guess what? You can't stop people from having a certain perspective about you. No. Because it's already fixated in their mind. Right. You can't. And, and then no matter how much you try to build who you want to be, mm -hmm. If it's not really you, it, you can't maintain it. That's true. You can't maintain it, so you might as well be you. Right. And that's where the authenticity comes in. So would you say that this is 
a book of lessons? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's divided into three um, parts. Mm -hmm. Be ready, be bold, be fearless. Be ready, be bold, be fearless. Come on, girl. Hmm. hmm. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you right here. So, if you look at the table of contents, step one, I tell you, be ready. Right. Okay? And step one, the first lesson I talk about is how openness brings opportunity. Right. So, you know, sometimes we miss out on opportunities because we're not open, we're not ready. I talk about all the things you need to do just to prepare to be able to be your most authentic self. Right. Because guess what? Your authenticity is connected to your true destiny. That's true. And some people are confused and can't find out, what am I supposed to be doing? What is my gift? What is my... Well, baby, the problem is, mm. beloved, mm. you, don't know, <laughs> you don't know who you are. Right. And you don't know who you are because you're still trying to be who everybody else wants you to That's be. That's right. You're going to have to be okay with disappointing some people. I'm telling you what I don't walk through. Right. You know, I mean, when my mama was like, I was like, mom, I mean, mothers have certain expectations of their daughters. You know, and it wasn't even anything bad. It's just when you change, when you're different. People have an expectation of you to be, it's comfortable for them. Right. For you to stay the same. But you got to do you. You got to grow. You got to grow. Growth brings change. Ha absolutely. When we get to step two. Oh, Erin, you just want to try. Okay. All right. But I'm still going to get you. Be bold. <laughs> Where is it? Be bold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm reaching for. Oh, Lord. Where is it? Hold I on, see. Chad. There okay, it wait. There got it. it. Got it. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Be bold. This is where we deal with. Really stepping out there. And you know what? You cannot be bold if there's no preparation. That's true. You know, so like I said, first, be ready. Mm -hmm. Next, be bold. And be bold, girl. That's what we get into. Mm. Okay, lessons like um, my, my favorite one. Okay, one of my favorite ones is do you, boo, stop waiting for permission to live. That's right. Hmm. For what? For what? And it sounds good on paper. Mm -hmm. But when you start doing it, right. it is a little difficult because you get in this position where you are comfortable being mediocre. Right. And until you really dig into it and say, nah, boo, I, I gotta step it up. up. I gotta step, step it up. up. Yeah. But my very favorite one is say no, but don't take no for an answer. Got it. Hmm. That's real audacious. And that's why I love you. See how my eyes are gleaming right now? I always say, baby? you say no right now, mm -hmm. but eventually you're going to say yes. This just no right now. And see, my thing is what I'm telling people to do is don't be afraid to disappoint other people. Now, I sound like I'm being a renegade and I'm being rebellious, but guess what? You know what? Take it for what it is. Right. Because here's the thing. You spend so much time trying to make other people happy but what about you right. and if there's nothing else you get from my book i'm not just telling you to be you but i'm saying honor you right i'm saying put yourself first because all that you're trying to do for your kids your husband your 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 wife your this your that your, your job oh god right you know it doesn't really matter if you're dying it doesn't really matter if you're not making yourself happy. Right. I know what it's like to be on a job, to be um, hustling and bustling, trying to do this and being that for friends and doing all these things. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, nothing left for you. And then my dream keeps going on the back burner year after year because right. we want people to mm -hmm. give us applause. Mm -hmm. You better, what, what let, uh, let us see say, clap for yourself. Okay. Hmm. You better. Clap for yourself. Let them know what I can get. Oh, God. You, well, first of all, if you're in the Mobile area, you could get it from me. Pull up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so crazy. But it's on Amazon right now, so you can go to Amazon, order your book. All you got to do is put in organic authenticity. This book will bless your life. It's only $12. I think they're doing free shipping right now. Okay. I yeah. mean, um, still and for the, um, the cyber thing, they still doing the uh, free shipping. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think and so. also, she will be at the Mixed Mingle yes. and Mimosas Holiday Networking event yes. that um, Lush Consulting Firm and Gemini Studios is having on December the 8th from 12 mm -hmm. to 2, which is $5. Mm -hmm. All business owners, entrepreneurs, potential mm -hmm. um, business owners, come out. Mm -hmm. $5, bring your business card. Let's network. Let's get it in. Now I have books there. She'll have books on deck. Um, also, 
And you said you speak. Yes, uh, yes, I've been speaking for years. Um, and you know, the level, of course, that I want to be at, I want to be, you know, with the Tony Robbins of the world. Right. I want to have my own talk show. I've been telling people this. Right. Because I was listening one night to Keep Sweat and how these women call in, talking about nothing. I did say talking about. Yeah. I did say that. Nothing. Nothing. I said, no, I could have a real radio show or late night talk show where we talk about some stuff for real. Right. So that's one of my that's one of my aspirations. I'm actually it. trying to get into the speaking thing. Yeah. Um I'm working on the point of being authentic. Because mm -hmm. I do have a story to share. Mm -hmm. I have something to tell mm -hmm. but being raw and mm -hmm. just don't care is mm -hmm. where I'm trying to Yep. Get. But I'm gonna tell you this if I can give you any advice about mm -hmm. being authentic, you can't make it happen. Right. You have to just open, open up, up to it. Right. Yep, just open up to it. And when it's time to tell your story, I promise you, the people will find you. Mm -hmm. the, the Whether it's in speaking engagements, whether it's people you meet on the street, however it comes. Because mm -hmm. it may start coming to you just through people that you meet that share your story. You're like, I would have never met them any other way. Right. And that is like kind of like your practice or whatever. So don't put any expectations on it. Just let it come. Gotcha. That's the hard thing, because, you know, as humans, we're so controlling. We are. And yeah. it, it, and we're not even the ones who control No, us. come on. <laughs> we're know, not even, no, it's, it's no. not, it's not for try. us to control. We try, but no, at it's the end not. of the day, let it happen. That's right. Let it happen. Just open yourself up to being real, being honest, not worrying about, you know, how people feel about you, because... You know, I hear people all the time talking about who doesn't support them mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of energy that keeps people not supporting that, you. That, huh, can you say that again, please? I mean, you cannot make people support you. This is the thing. Those people are not for you, yep. period. Yep. If they don't support you, so what? Yep. The ones who do support you, glorify and praise them for mm -hmm. supporting you. The ones that don't, so what? Mm -hmm. Do you think Gucci mad because everybody came by Gucci? No, they only okay with the people who can afford it and who mm -hmm. buy it. So with that being said, who cares who don't support you? And you know what, Kim? Here's the other thing about that. That, that really, you have to, and, and look, we, you know, we've been there before. You have to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? I can't say that I done bought everybody's book. Right. I have a, I have a right. Right. You know what I mean? You, people have a right to use your services or your product, or not. Right. So don't get caught up in that, because while you're getting caught up in that, you'll be creating something else. And then not only that, you may have people who can't right now. There you and go, you and go you go turn them saying, off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you go to say, who don't support you, people this and this, people mm -hmm. that, when they are able to yep. support you, they're going to be like, okay, you was the one saying, yep. I want, you wouldn't support me because mm -hmm. of X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You have to allow people to actually want to support you themselves that's right as far as share some key things to keep you motivated as an entrepreneur oh number one number one number one you have to have the right people around you yes you really do it. you really do some people you know that that energy you need people that are um supportive that get you I call them your tribe, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes it takes time to get there because you may be surrounded by toxic people. So before you can get to a place where you have the good people that you need in your life, sometimes you might have to be okay with being alone. That's true. And in your alone time, uh, one of the things that I love, you know, I was telling you about, you know, my gym and just even my uh, involvement with um, Herbalife, mm -hmm. they teach something that's so important to me as a life coach. Mm -hmm. We, as life coaches... We tell you all the time, you have to do your work. And part of your work is self-development. Yes. You've got to get on YouTube. I mean, I'm telling you, I can always tell within myself when I haven't. It's not a day that I'm not on YouTube, but am I on YouTube looking at The Breakfast Club? That's right. not self-development. Right. No. I'm on YouTube listening to Les Brown. That's my man now. Man. I love Les. You know, and, and Jim Rohn, who's really a, a good motivational speaker, and um, Mark Hughes, different people, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, that I really love. You got to find your, 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 your people that motivate you, help you get your butt up out the bed, right. help you to go and ask for that sale, right. help you to follow through and follow up. So personal development is everything. Um, professional development, too. Yeah. 
It is. It's know, needed. It's you gotta necessary. Invest. You got to invest. You got to invest. Mm -hmm. You have to invest in yourself. You know, and and also this is another thing. Watch what you say. Not just the people you're around. Just not, period. Because just, guess what? I get it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy yeah. because you have to watch what you put in the universe because it's coming back it's to coming you. Coming back. Period. It's coming back. And and you need to be careful. I tell I tell my my, my mentees. I tell clients, I tell friends, what are you thinking internally? Your subconscious is so strong. It is. So what, not just what comes out of your mouth is important, but what, what are you thinking within yourself? So if you're within yourself saying, man, I know I ain't going to get that job. Mm. Man, I know I'll never be married. Mm. Or, oh, you know what? I don't know how people just don't support me. They don't this, they don't. That's the record that you're playing in right. your mind. And guess what? You get more of what you're thinking subconsciously yes. than it is what you speak out your mouth. That's you true. Can, you could be fake and be like, oh, I know I'm going to... But inside... You don't feel that. That is the, tr the true essence of what you're going to receive. So think about your self-talk. What are you saying to yourself and what do you believe? That is everything. Y'all got that? Now, that was a, that's, that was a whole, whole, <laughs> whole, whole good word right there. <laughs> like, for real. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Give them your social media handle. Let them know how they can get in contact with you. And when you get the book, it's in there, too. Oh. Just saying. Put it on. No. Okay. <laughs> Happy holidays. That's right. And no, you get a book, you get a book. All right. That's right. So um, uh, on, on Facebook, Gentry Simmons, very easy to find me. Um, on Twitter, I am Ask Coach Gentry. Okay. Same thing on, um, did I change, I'm trying to think, did I change my Snapchat? No, no, I don't even know. I'm trying to get the young people to show right. me the step. I just know how to snap a little bit. That's not a real. Well, word. I know on Facebook the Golden Life Golden Coaching. Life, yeah. Is, yeah, that's my um, that's my coaching business. And ask uh, www. I'm talking too fast. www. Askcoachgentry.com. That's my one stop shop. That's my site where you can basically connect with me and all that as well. Facebook I'm on all the time. Instagram is actually the plus size mannequin. Okay. Okay. So that's the only one that's different. But my Twitter, my Facebook, and my website all ask Coach Gentry. And they are all linked. I'm sure yeah. your website will link to all of them. It will. Well, then, um, and then my Facebook has links to everything. Okay. So is my Instagram. Great. So I'm just, yeah, I'm out here. This has been good. <laughs> this has been a good, 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 good interview. So that's our time for today for Business Awareness. Starts it with Lush. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like and share this post. This is some great information in this. Um, any entrepreneurs, businesses you would like to see on um, Business Awareness Starts with Lush, hit me in my inbox to let me know. You gave me some suggestions. I'm interviewing some of them soon. Um, also, if you have not got the word, Business Awareness Thursday is now on the iPart Radio what? app and iTunes, so you will be on That's both. awesome. So, also, YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube yes. channel. Um, just type in Kimberly Knight, mm -hmm. the Lush logo will pop up. Make sure you follow me, but I'll, make sure y'all subscribe to iTunes um, sub channel and the actual um, iHeart Radio app. Go in there and find me. It'll be greatly appreciated. Yes. Also, do not forget December the 8th, Saturday from 12 to 2 at Gemini Studios. We, be, we will be hosting a networking event, a holiday networking event. It will be bottomless mimosas. Mm. It's called Mixed Mingle and Mimosas. Um, we have over 20 vendors. Um, vendor spots are sold out. So to attend, it's only $5. That's it, $5. Come in, get some great information. We got door prizes, giveaways. We're going to have a couple of networking games to get everyone, you know, intertwined, give some valid information, open up that third eye, let off that light bulb, and just get to work for 2019. So. Yes, we're going all in in 2019, that's right. baby. So thank you. Yay, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And make sure y'all stay connected. Yeah. So. That's it for today. See you next Thursday and happy Friday Eve. Bye.